Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Teresa back again. This afternoon we're going to be basing the inspiration for our project around Vincent van Gogh's painting Starry Starry Night. If you can remember in the introductory journal that we did uh, for the slow stitch cover and journal, I had a piece in there of Vincent van Gogh's sunflower study and we did some sewing over that well we're still staying with the vincent van gogh theme but this afternoon we're going to be using this picture here from um and it's called starry starry night and it's actually one of my very very favorite pictures of all time i've taken this from the internet so they're quite readily available so just run one off you want it this size to carry out this particular project now we're going to be using slow stitch again and what we're going to do we're going to put our own interpretation on this so you might actually want to do it in different colors completely um, and not use the colors that vincent van gogh used i've actually tried to keep to these colors within reason so we're just going to look at this just for a moment um vincent van gogh he painted this in the late 19th century while he was in the psychiatric hospital a lot of it is painted from memory because through the barred windows of his um hospital room i don't think he could see very much so a lot of this is based on memory and he painted this a year before his death and it was after um the incident shall we say or the tragedy with his ear with severing his ear now i think it's particularly lovely it shows a great deal of movement if you can see the swirls and the curls and how it actually seems to move when you're looking at it i think it's rather lovely you can see the brush strokes as well and how he's used the the oil paint on the canvas and his colors are very limited there's yellows and oranges um different blues slightly browny red here um it's repeated the colors here it is actually a night sky and we have hills or mountains there and some, a tree here or a couple of trees here and a small village there this is the the moon and these are stars there are actually 11 stars but this piece has only picked up two four five and a little bit so this will be our inspiration so we'll make a start on it now and as usual we will be using the slow stitch running stitch and canvas background now to save time i've started i haven't started the sewing but i've i've done the, the fussy little bits that you don't need to see me do i've actually taken a tracing of this of the pieces that i want to use so if you see i have the swirly bits here i have the moon there and the stars and this bit here now i'm not sure what to call that bit but it's sky <laughs> so i have the yellow bit here i haven't done the village or the tree i just wanted to do the sky and to interpret it as i wanted to interpret it so i've traced this now um a secret of, of tracing accurately if you like get some masking tape and tape this onto your window now with the light shining through the back it picks up the detail lovely so you take that onto your window and then take that over a blank pa paper over and then take them both to the window and then you can see with the light shining through all the shapes that you want so just draw around them now i have done two you can see i have two here now one is for reference in case you need a reference at any point and you don't want to cut your picture up so that one's for reference and this one is to be cut up so i'll put those away 
and all you're going to do and I won't do all of this because you know how to cut out so you don't need to see me cut all these little pieces out so we're going to cut out like the positive shapes so these shapes here we're going to cut these out the stars the swirly curly bits and the moon and this pit here now I've already done this so I'll stick that away over there once again we have our trusted calico background right let me line that up with the camera there we go so background and a nice heavy calico I did buy some lightweight calico recently and I have to use it double because it's so fine so nice heavyweight calico I bought that from Amazon and then we're going to keep referring to our picture so there's the picture now I have got the picture here and I will be just having it out of eye shot there and I will be referring to that so I'm keeping that there now I'm going to start with the sky and I'd like the sky to look dark dark and almost thunderous so I have this piece of lace and what I'm going to do oh I should show you first the pieces I've cut out I'm getting ahead of myself so I've cut the pieces out here so there's the swirly curly bits and this is why you need the reference so after you've cut them out you can refer to this and you can look at it and think oh yeah that goes there then that bit went in there and seem to be missing the long piece here oh I wonder what I've done with that this is the background and then we have the stars and I put st the stars and the moon Oh, I must have dropped that the long piece on the floor I'll pick that up later hmm, it's a puzzle so anyway we we'll start with the sky so I'm going to make the sky dark now the sky I have a nice piece of lace here and this will be the top I don't want the sky too too thick Oh, cut them with the wrong scissors so we'll cut that along probably maybe that tip and of course once you pin it all down if you don't like what you've you've got you can always unpin it and change it before you stitch it so I want all mine stitched down before I start sewing now this is the background a nice blue on top of the calico I almost forgot about that <laughs> oh that's not right the calico shining through the lace so that is a lovely piece of fabric and I think that is almost sky like sky like as it is so on top of this I'm going to place the lace now I'm actually going to place it right, right side down I don't want too much of that texture on the top so I'm placing it that way down right where's the calico that's it it's just on the calico there placing that down there and then I'm going to place I'm going to place the moon and I think the stars next oh yeah I'll place the moon and the stars for some reason I've written Sun on that piece so this bit back to the reference goes that way so oh look at that that was good I can leave that there so I'm going to pin that down now this fabric this yellow has two two sides it has a paler side and it has a brighter side now I think I'm going to use the brighter side because that oh the camera's got a bit funny because that is quite a bright piece so I'm going to turn it over and this is actually the wrong side as well 
and that goes oh my goodness let me just make sure I get that the right way round ah that's it so that goes there I'm pasting that there and I'm just popping a pin in there right I'm going to pop some more pins along the lace now to hold it in place now if you want it to you could actually secure it in the center with your glue stick your yoohoo the prit or whatever glue stick you use just along there just to hold it down i'm not going to do that but by all means if that's what you want to do and it will hold it just in place while you pin it and it just gives it a little bit more um security for laying flat so now i'm going to place some stars and i'm going to put oh didn't cut those out very well did i they're still joined so those stars there we go right so we go back to our reference and you can see where the stars are so there is one over here so that one will go roughly there and then we have one over here basically at the side of the moon so that will go there and the other one we can't place yet because we need to put the swirly curly bits down so well, I'm going to use them that way round um that's the, no that looks a bit high actually so i'm going to move that down I'm, I'm referring to the picture so i'm going to move that bit down to there and pin that and then this piece yeah that piece was all right there wasn't it so i'm going to stick that piece there when i say stick i mean pin and that piece can go there right now we've come to the curly whirly bits so we have two curly whirly bits swirls that one now that one goes just under this star so still referring to the picture to, to my little diagram there and it looks as if it goes I'm going to put it there underneath the lace actually round about there so if that one goes there the smaller bit wraps itself curls itself there and see how that fits in there and the tail curls under right i don't want them meeting i don't want them joining here otherwise they'll just become one shape so i'm going to leave just a little gap there so we can fill that with some stitches and i'm going to put those down there those there now use as many pins as you need all these pieces of fabric are from my bit bag there are pieces that you know, some would have thrown away when people have cleaned my classroom doing me a favour, surprising me when I haven't been there, I've been off sick or whatever. <gasps> done me a favour, <laughs> they've cleared out what they thought was rubbish and it was actually precious stuff. Oh, and I had to pretend to be grateful, really, I wanted to cry. <gasps> My lovely, lovely bits and pieces and you know, the smiling faces. I'm thinking of one person in particular, Sheila. 
and oh my goodness she was so pleased bless her and um oh I was so upset how could she do that to me but she did she had um the best intentions right and those go there so we're still referring back so please please hide your precious bits of rubbish bits of string bits of nonsense and nothingness hide them because to us they're precious right now i need another piece of this lace down here and the piece that i can't find oh my goodness I think I must have left it where I was cutting them out. Oh, how stupid. Never mind. It is this shape. It's this shape here. And it's yellow to match these. It's the same fabric as these. So if you could please use your imagination. <laughs> and it will be placed along here. And it'll have a little bit of lace underneath here so if you can imagine the yellow piece here will go along there and there'll be lace underneath it now what we do is we're going to start the slow stitching now it's really up to you if you want to tack them down but the nice thing about slow stitching, you can do two in one. Use a very nice small stitch and um, you can stitch around the edge. Now I'm not sure where to start first. I think I'll start on the lace. Now this is the sort of work that you just keep adding to and you'll go back to and you'll fill in the gaps so as you're you're moving along you won't be finishing it it's not until we actually get to the end of the first stage i would say of slow stitching so you're going to slow stitch everything on and then when you get to the end you'll look back and think right there are gaps here i think i'll fill that in with another color so it doesn't matter at this stage whether you leave gaps whether you just want to go around the shapes just to secure them and then go back and start your slow stitching filling in the shapes it really doesn't matter it's entirely up to you so we'll make a start anyway um oh i don't know where to start see too much choice and i'm overwhelmed i think i'm going to start here so i need to turn it around my way without obscuring the screen too much now i'll see if i can do it here so i'm going to make a start here and sew this nice small running stitches that will hold it in place right while i i just do this i'll tell you what's happening to the shapes in the middle these positive shapes we call them these solid concrete shapes we're slow stitching down as you can see practically a fabric fabric collage or applique call it what you want I'm going to do rows and rows of these filling it in like Van Gogh did in his painting if you can imagine all these brush marks as stitches they're all going to be stitches they're going to be a slow stitches a running stitch only we're going to use on where he's used the canvas and paint we're using fabric and thread but the results will still be the same they'll still be very personal and it will be an interpretation of a starry night it doesn't have to be identical these are the positive shapes the shapes that we're going to be sewing down 
the negative shapes are the shapes between now what we'll be doing once we've put down the positive shapes we're going to go back and we're going to fill in all the negative shapes once again with slow stitch now this flows really nicely like related lines all the way around one line related to the next following the same contour sorry the shame the shame the same contours and this is what we're going to be doing with our thread to fill in the background or the neg negative shapes and it's going to be a lovely lovely thing to do well i'm afraid my stitches aren't too neat because i'm trying to keep it this way so you can see what i'm doing but i might actually take them out and do them again so i don't need to tell you now what the slow stitch is if you followed the slow stitch journal course then all the stitches that we use now you'll have used and be quite familiar with through that course if not if you're just joining us here then this is just a running stitch a basic running stitch now i'm doing mine very big for the sake of the camera and i'm working at an angle so you can see what I'm doing but it's quite difficult working this way now this piece is going to be filled up with the stitches backwards and forwards backwards and forwards I'm not going to go across um, I, I shall finish it here and then now I won't be going across the stars or the Sun I'm going to do each of those I'll take that through the back and I'm going to leave it hanging because I will be taking that out I don't like it but that's just, just to give you an idea right now how I'll be doing these I'm going to each star I shall go round in a circular movement so you could keep it held down with your thumb how's that oh because this is satin the lights playing on it i do hope you'll be able to see it and we i'm going around oh this is nice to do i'm just following the outline of the circle all the way round and I'm going to fill the circle in with slow stitch now please don't forget this is your interpretation you might want to change your colors completely you might even want to use a different painting you might just want to outline your shapes or you might want to fill them in So I'm going to go round it again. I'm going to fill the whole shape in. Um, I'm wondering what's the best way for you to see it. I'm going to fill that all in with our nice running stitches. It's up to you how big or small you make your stitches. It's about making texture make it interesting it's all about you and how you work and don't forget it is an art what you're doing is an art there that one's sewn down just loop it off at the back and as you know i always use knots I always knot the back of my thread unless as I said before the work will be visible from the back and then it's best not to so that one is sewn down and that one can stay there because I'm quite pleased with that I will do the same to this and these stars here this I'm going to 
stitch around follow those contours with my sewing so what color should we do that um let's do what well, has another blue will you see that blue on there no i think i'll have green just so you might be able to see the green where you won't see the blue i'll start here and i'm, I'm only starting here because it's a light colour and hopefully you'll see the green thread oh yeah you might do right I'm taking that pin out so I'll hold this down around we go oh there I've just dug my nail varnish again I don't know why I bother with the stuff the needles are great for just digging it off right can you see that don't do what i've just done try not to pull it too tight they are so three stitches there now i'm going to continue all the way around the shape filling the shapes in so what i will do i'm going to continue here i'm going to fill the shapes in and then I will possibly start filling in the background as well now there is nothing to this it is just running stitch so first thing to do is to get your picture decide on your picture and that was starry starry night by Van Gogh then you're going to make two tracings of the part that you want to do you might not want to do my bit you might want to do something else you might only want to do a tiny bit this bit it's up to you completely you might not even want it this size but what you do want are two pieces two tracings one for reference and one to cut out this one to look at and admire <laughs> oh right so anyway got carried away there so you need your pictures and your templates then you're going to cut out the shapes in your chosen fabrics um then you want your calico background as usual calico background or foundation whatever you want to call it and your background fabric place one place the background fabric on top of your calico foundation then you can start placing your shapes as you wish or as they are on the picture and as you can see I've stuck pretty much to the original painting then you're going to pin the shapes and slow stitch nice running stitch all the way around now you might just want to leave it as I said earlier you only you might want to do just the outline that's okay it's up to you you might want to fill them in like I did here completely fill the shapes in which I'm going to do on this and then I will possibly before I see you next time will make a start on doing the background I might even finish it so I will get back to you and it's such a lovely thing to do sort yourself out a lovely picture and I think Van Gogh's ideal but then I'm biased because I love Van Gogh anyway so take care and I'll be back in a gif and I'm back and here is my finished piece well not this this is the painting so that is the painting and there's my finished piece so I did actually take out that first line that I said I would I didn't like it it, it just didn't look right so I have slow stitched across here around here I've actually added a pinwheel here but you don't have to do that at all and I've circled around to give the bright you see here it just suggests slow stitch right around the edge so that is what I've done so around the circles 
I've done um, slow stitching right around in rings several rings around each and around the moon as well everything else is quite self-explanatory and it's everything that you have done before it's the slow stitch over applique round following the shape round making it swirl with the stitches the same here following it round and giving it a nice swirl the stitches coming close here where at the narrow part and then spreading out here I did find the yellow piece it was indeed under the table right under my foot actually <laughs> so this has been pliqued down with running stitch again various yellows from pale yellow to a deeper yellow there's some white as well and some blue it needed the blue to pull it together I think if I hadn't put the blue there it would have just been a strip of yellow at the bottom but the blue has pulled it has made more of a composition I think I've used the red here well it's a ready brown as you can see there's quite a lot of it in the actual picture here this bit here is this bit here with a few liberties taken but hey ho who cares so with this color I've used it as well here and here I've just picked out pit bits and shapes in that colour once again to pull it all together otherwise if I hadn't done that this would have just been a piece of dark ready brown on the edge it didn't mean anything but now it's got a relationship that runs through here it has a relationship with these stitches these stitches and those a little bit of green I've introduced green because apparently um, there is a tiny bit of green in the painting that hasn't actually photocopied I can't see any green there but I do know there's a tiny bit of green um, let me move that now the shapes here as you can see maybe if I lift that up without making you see can you see that the negative shapes the background shapes I've completed I've completely filled with slow stitching just going round the shape as it is just following the shape closing the shape up the same here um, around here which hasn't come out too well on the camera but it is definitely there uh, where else filled in a few gaps here bringing up that color that ready brown color here and I've added a few Two French knots there, French knot there, one there, some straight stitches here in orange. And apart from that, there's no secrets, no trickery, it's just everything that you know. So that is my interpretation. The problem I had, I found these, I bought these in um I think it was it says Germany there but it wasn't Germany it says Germany there made in China and I bought them I think it was in Rotterdam last December and um, oh I haven't used them yet but I thought these beautiful little stars I might just sprinkle around and sew them where they fall and I'm still not sure whether to do that or not or will that be over egging the pudding I don't know I really don't know <laughs> and it's quite nice but I don't know so I'm going to actually finish finish it first completely and then I'll have a another look but I'm just so desperate to use those stars I'll be surprised if I don't use them but I don't think it's the right time at the moment to put them on this so the next part is applying the back now it's up to you what you do with your finished piece this I had thought would look nice on a tote bag I I have several tote bags calico tote bags of different sizes to decorate it did actually look nice on a small one 
but it would have meant I'd have to chop some off and I don't do that then I thought well another journal cover we can always do with a journal cover and this is I think my preferred option at the moment that would be the journal cover or it would even make a nice bag or purse there's so much to do or a jewellery roll for travelling there is just so many possibilities to using just this piece of fabric of that size and I meant to say what I forgot to tell you is that it is a four size it's just the regular printer size printing paper so it's pretty standard um, let me see what that is in inches it's eight and a quarter inches by 12 inches so quite a nice size to work with so we'll carry on and I'm going to back it and I'm backing it the same way that I backed the previous journal covers right I have chosen this it has a pink a lilac in it my first thought was to do it in blue if I can find yes it was this this blue here I was going to do it in that blue but then when I looked at the front it seemed to fight with the, the cover the border which I'm going to use it for as well would have been just as busy as the actual uh, piece the starry starry night and as much as I love this I thought no it's going to be too much I need something plainer so I decided on this it's furnishing fabric that's the back side which is just as lovely and this is the front so front side out I've ma matched it up and trimmed it I'm now going to pin it and I'm going to pin it this way that's it so I shall pin this all the way round I've also cut a border a border out now you could actually pin the border at the same time as you're pinning this round but for those of you who are new to this sort of work I'm going to do it this way it doesn't take any longer right now I've done three sides there so this side is quite flat it's quite secure so I'm going to take I've cut four of these two long ones that will do the two long sides and two shorter ones that will do the shorter sides so I'm going to start with a short one I've ironed it and I've put a crease down the centre now with the edge of this the edge of that will go and fit snugly up against the crease so we're going to fit that there there and we're going to pin that so pin that down and there and have a look to make sure yes see it's caught that side as well so I'm going to trim that long piece off there no I'm going to leave that just in case I'm not going to trim that off yet then I'm going to take a long piece here and do exactly the same here so edge to edge I'm going to lift the pins out now as I go along edge to edge and then pin that down all the way along I'll put my pin 
pins that way this time because that's a small border inside there so that's two sides done and then the other two sides will be done just the same I'm going to cut that one off though trim that now where's the other short one thing is with this fabric it is lovely but it does fray which we don't mind if we're making shabby grungy like covers but some wood and then that one goes in there and then we're going to pin that in place again quite a nice thing to do it's a Sunday afternoon here stormy it's very it's sort of humid -y, stormy afternoon right so that's now three sides done that doesn't look too straight to me measure it against that line in the table no it doesn't look too straight so I'm just going to straighten that up that's better that line in the table there I don't know if you can see it yeah, there it's very useful I've got a cutting board there but oh, it's under so much stuff I really should get it out right now it's time to cut those off take the, the last piece and do the same in there in there I'm going to pin that something thick there right down here I'm gonna take that pin out there this is probably so boring to watch we just pinning fabric but we're nearly there that's it one pin in there just for luck that's it and Bob's your uncle so I've heard got a lot of uncles but Bob's not one of them right so I just trim off these overhanging edges I left those just to make sure that it would fit there you go taking shape already so we've lost the tatty edge I don't think we've lost anything else no 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 that's lovely now it's up to you whether you tack or not but as I've said before we are using tacking stitch um, sorry um, running stitch which is like a very tiny tacking stitch so I don't think there's any need just be wary when you get close to the pins just mind your fingers stick a pin there now because we've creased it in half the fo this folder this fabric here we've creased it in half we know that half of it is this side and the other half is the other side and they should match so we can now do our running stitch and I put a knot there now because this is going to be visible I'm taking that out the knot will be visible so hide the knot inside oh hit it too well then it came out so there we go in there and we can start 
some nice running stitches around the edge now you should possibly get three rows of running stitch around the edge now as you get to the pin just lift the pins out there you go and this doesn't take too long at all but I don't expect you to sit and watch me do three rows of running stitch so I will turn the camera off here and carry on you see that and I'll get back to you as soon as I've done it and for you it's not going to take very long <laughs> not even long enough to make a cup of coffee for me it will probably take a good hour so I'll get back to you as soon as I've done the I've slow stitched the border okay so hang on in there and as if by magic here's the finished piece as you can see I did do three rows of slow stitching around the edge I did it in pink I worked it in pink because I thought blue might be just a little bit too much and the pink just adds a nice uh, something nice to it it breaks up all the intensity of the blue and I just think it looks really nice so that is the outside or the right side I should say and that is the wrong side now as you can see the slow stitch in the three rows haven't really come out um, if they have I mean there I can see two distinct rows but the stitches are very very tiny and um, they're not very noticeable to be honest um, where's that bit there there's some there that you can see uh, oh there's a big one up there but apart from that and a few up here you can't really notice it so I think if I were to continue with this and make it into a journal journal cover I might very well sort of embellish around here not with that <laughs> it's just an old piece of calico but I think I would maybe embellish around there with some lace or um, a nice piece of braid but having said that it's um, it's okay as it is just a little bit take those rough bits off right so I'm rather pleased with this and I think I probably will make this one into a journal cover and it will look like this that will be the right side oops that will be the right side and this will be the back side I still haven't made my mind up yet as to whether to put stars on there I think I might have a little break from it for a while if I'm going to make it into journal cover I think I probably will add the stars I'll scatter them and then sew them in place just for some added interest so that is how I imagine my journal cover will look but I'm not quite sure I do like the idea of making another journal cover but I might just play around as well to see what else I could make cushion them um, a nice cushion springs to mind one of those long ones that sits on the settee nice long one padded oh yeah, there's so many things that you could do with it but anyway that is starry starry night my version of the Van Gogh masterpiece I hope you like it I hope you have a go let me know if you do how you get on or let me know um, if you decide to use another painting I'd be really interested to see what you use and what you produce so um, there goes a the bus I hope you can hear this so have a wonderful Sunday afternoon Sunday evening or whatever day you happen to be watching this and take care and hopefully I'll see you speak to you again take care now bye bye